So in the last video I mentioned that Austin abandons the intermediate picture, the, the picture he proposed instead of the grammatical view, what I call the grammatical view. And in this video we're going to dig down into why he's going to give a different view. The reason essentially is that he thinks that this, dis this distinction that we've been relying on between a performative and a constative, he thinks that this distinction is not very clear at the end of the day. And that actually when you try to define a performative, it's pretty hard to come up with anything satisfactory. So as I said in the next video, we're going to go on and talk about what he proposes as an alternative. In this video, we're going to talk about, well, what are the reasons for thinking it's hard to define what a performative is? And you might be surprised to hear me say this, because you might think, well, didn't we already do that? Didn't we already give a definition of a performative? It's like, it's like doing something that isn't an assertion. But we're going to see reasons now to see why that actually really can't be quite the definition. So we're going to go through just a number of different proposals for what the definition of a performative could be, and we're going to see that each of the proposals seems to have pretty serious problems. Now the proposals are going to get more plausible as we go through them, but there are going to be problems with all of them. I'm going to warm up with a pretty simple and kind of pretty obviously implausible analysis of a performative. And the first proposal is to say, well, an utterance is a performative utterance just when it doesn't make a statement. So proposal one, utterance doesn't make a statement. But this overgeneralizes pretty quickly because it doesn't talk about anything about the grammatical form. So remember we said it's something very important about performatives is that they look like things that should make statements, but they don't. This doesn't say anything about that. It just says the utterance doesn't make a statement. But by this light then, interrogative sentences that we use to ask questions and imperative sentences that we use to make orders, they would also count as performatives. So imperatives and interrogatives would count as performatives. And they don't seem like they are. It's true that they don't make a statement, they do other things. You don't use a question to make a statement usually. But one of the distinguishing things about performatives is that they're supposed to look like things that do make a statement or do make an assertion. So this proposal can't be quite right. So a, a different proposal might just take the problem with this one and build it into the definition. So our pro second proposal, proposal two, is going to be that a performative utterance is an utterance of a declarative sentence that does something other than assert a proposition. Utterance of a declarative that does not assert a proposition. And when I say assert a proposition, what I mean is like make a claim, a true or false claim about the world. So this is something more like the definition we've kind of been relying on. But actually there are some reasons to think that even this is not right either. So I'm going to give you two reasons. The first reason is because if you think about it, it's always the case that when you utter a declarative sentence, you're doing things other than making an assertion. So, for instance, you're saying the words in the sentence. That's one thing you're always doing, in addition, apart from making an assertion. You make various bodily movements. You think various things in your head. So to say that you're doing something that other than making an assertion, well, that's not going to be quite enough, because we're, well, we're always doing things other than making an assertion. So always do things other than assert. Now a thought at this point might be, well maybe we should just be more careful and say that the proposal explicitly says that you don't make that you don't make an assertion and you only do something else. But even that isn't going to work. Because think about when you utter a sentence in order to quote it. So for instance, suppose I say something like, J.L. Austin was a crabby Oxford don. That was my opening line. 
So in what I just did, I uttered two sentences, but I wasn't asserting the first sentence. The point of saying the first sentence was basically to be able to refer to it in the next in the next sentence. As some philosophers put it, I was mentioning rather than using the sentence. And because I was mentioning the sentence, I wasn't asserting it. I'm telling I'm using it to tell you what my opening line was. That doesn't look like a performative. It doesn't really look like I'm doing something in the same sense I'm doing something when I say something like, I pronounce you man and wife, saying that blah, 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 that was my opening sentence. That doesn't seem like a performative, but it would count as a performative by our proposal. So the pro so this problem is the problem of quotation. Because quot quoting sentences is doing something other, because quoting sentences is doing something with them that is not making an assertion. So that's the problem with our, with basically what you might think is the most natural proposal, that and a, perf a performative utterance is one that is an utterance of a declarative sentence which does something other than make an assertion. Our third proposal is going to be that, well, it's, an, it's a declarative sentence that makes true what it describes. So proposal three. And again, this, this also initially seems plausible when we think about the way that we introduce performatives. We introduce them with the idea that like saying it makes it so. But again, there are a few problems here. So let, the most minor one I'll mention is that, well, as for reasons that we've already talked about, this can't really be Austin's definition. Now, he, he does sort of entertain it. But clearly, it's not going to be satisfactory to him because Austin thinks that performatives aren't true or false. are not true or false. So he's not really going to be able to give this definition. It presupposes something he already thinks is false. Now he himself gives some reasons for disliking this. One thing he says is he thinks that it actually miscla misclassifies certain kinds of cases. So he talks about the sen a sentence like, I hereby state that Austin was a crabby Oxford Don. So when you're saying I, I hereby state or something like that, he wants to say that sentences like those are, are not performatives, rather they're con constatives. I'm, not, I'm a bit unsure about his intuition there, but I'll write it down anyway. So, classifies some constatives as performatives. That case, the one he gives, I'm less sure about, but there is a much better version of this objection. So remember, the proposal is that a performative utterance is an utterance that makes true the thing it describes. But think about a sentence just like, I'm talking right now. Whenever you say that, it's true. Saying the, the, the declarative sentence seems to make true the very thing that you're talking about. But it seems like there's some kind of difference between a sentence like, I'm talking right now, and I hereby declare you man and wife. The sense in which I make you man and wife by, by uttering the sentence seems to be kind of different from the way in which you make this sentence true by saying it. You make this true in a very sort of boring way, just that, you know, it just couldn't be possible for you to be saying it for, be, for, it, to be, for it to be false. And that doesn't really seem to be exactly what Austin has in mind with the performatives. So sentences like these seem to be counterexamples to our third proposal, the proposal that you make true what you're describing. It seems like it has to be something stronger than that. The last proposal that we're going to consider today, although you should think about others if you can, is the one that Austin prefers, or at least it's the one he thinks is the best. I think, as we said, he doesn't actually think you really can give a good definition of performative. He thinks this is basically as close as you can get, but that there are problems with it. So let's consider what the fourth proposal is. So the fourth proposal is stated in terms of this idea of an explicit performative. Well, I'll say what that is in a moment, but I'll tell you what the proposal for is first. So the proposal is that an utterance is performative 
when the same effect could be achieved using an explicit performative. Uh, same effect achieved with an explicit performative. So what is an explicit performative? Well, the explicit performatives are the ones of the form, like, I hereby do X by saying this. So, I hereby pronounce you man and wife, or I hereby name this ship Bodie McBoatface, or I hereby promise you that P. These are all explicit performatives. Actually, we've been mostly focusing on ex examples of explicit performatives. But there are, other, there are also examples of implicit performatives. So, if I say, I will be there in a particular tone to you, talking about your cello recital, that will be a promise to go to your cello recital. So why in saying, I will be there, am I making a performative utterance according to this proposal? Well, the, propo the reason I'm making a performative utterance is because the same effect could be achieved using an explicit performative. So if I made you a promise by saying, I will be there, I could equally, have mel I could equally well have made the promise by saying, I promise you, or I hereby promise you, that I will be there. Obviously, I hereby promise you is a little bit formal, but I could do it. I could make the promise by saying something in that formula. What about that proposal? Is that a good definition of performative? Well, again, there are actually two problems here. So one problem, if you thought, if you agreed with Austin, one problem was with the, with the earlier example of the things that seemed to be constatives that he thought would be clarified as performatives. So a claim like, I hereby state that J.L. Austin was a crabby Oxford Don. Austin seems to think, well, that really is making some kind of assertion, so we should describe it as a constative. It looks like it would be counted as a performative by this definition, because if I say, I hereby state that P, well, then trivially, the same effect could be stated with, an ex with, with something of the form, I, he I hereby state that P, because that's just exactly what I did. Do, do, it's just the same thing as what I did. So the first problem is that I hereby state things like that are counted as performatives. A second related objection is that there are other kinds of claim, there are other kinds of things with this formula that it's a bit iffy about whether they're performatives or not. So Austin gives the example of saying that you agree with somebody or that you welcome somebody. So suppose I say, I agree that Austin was crabby, or I say, I welcome you all to class. It's not 100% clear that these are performative utterances, because it seems to make a bit more sense in these cases to ask whether what you said is true or not. For instance, if I say, I welcome you all to class, and then I completely ignore you and seem to be visibly irritated by your presence. You might ask, well, was it really true that he welcomed us all to class? That doesn't seem to be kind of nonsensical or weird like it does in the case of other performatives. It's even clearer with agree. If I say, I agree that Austin was crabby, or I hereby agree that Austin was crabby. And if, the, if I say that, but I, I then go on to presuppose in conversation that he was really good natured and a very fun guy, it seems like it was just false that I agreed that Austin was crabby. Like, it's just something I said, but I didn't actually, I didn't, I didn't really mean it. So with examples like those, they seem to be of the right form. They seem to be of the form of a performative. You can say, I hereby agree that P, or I hereby welcome you. It's a little bit for formal, but you can say these things. But it's not clear that they share this property that Austin thought performatives had of not being clearly true or false. In certain cases, it seems to make a lot of sense to ask whether the thing was really true or false. So here the counterexamples are agree and welcome. So you can use the explicit performative formula with agree and welcome, but it's not totally clear that you actually get a performative as a result. The last thing I want to mention about this proposal, it's not something that Austin talks about, but an obvious worry is that you might think that the proposal is circular. Because remember, what we're trying to do is we're trying to define what a performative is. But we've got this notion of an explicit performative. And you might think, well, what is an explicit performative other than just a performative? And in fact, this worry is made a little bit more severe by these kinds of counterexamples. 
because you might think, well, in the counterexamples with agree and welcome, like I agree or I welcome you, things like this, you might say, well, they sort of look like they're of the formula of explicit performatives, but they're not really explicit performatives. They're something else. But if the form of the words doesn't tell you what an explicit performative is, well, then you might think, well, we really need a, a definition of an explicit performative. And, we, and if we don't have one, the proposal just isn't a non-circular definition of the, no, of the idea we're trying to come up with in the first place. And it probably doesn't really look right that we're actually going to be able to become able to first define explicit performative and then define performative in general out of that. So because of these counterexamples, we can't just recognize what an explicit performative is on the basis of just a phrase. We can't define it as a specific kind of phrase. But then if we don't have a definition of this notion, the notion of an explicit performative, then it just looks like the analysis is not going to be explanatory in the right way, and probably it's actually going to be circular. So there might be other possibilities. We haven't probably exhausted all the possibilities, but I hope this gives you the flavor of why it's actually a lot harder than you might have thought to define what a performative is. So we went through a bunch of different proposals. The first proposal was that the utterance doesn't make a statement. We saw that wrongly classifies questions and commands as performatives. We considered a, slightly, a second slightly better proposal, which is that an utterance of a declarative that does not assert a proposition, that's what a performative is. We saw there was the example of I hereby state, that's maybe a counterexample to this proposal, and the big problem it has is with quotation. It clearly misclassifies quotations of sentences as performatives when they really clear, clearly seem to be not performatives. We then have a third proposal, was that a performative utterance is one that makes true what it describes. It's not immediately clear that this is something Austin can say, because he's already committed to saying that performatives are not true or false. But even if you think that he's wrong about that, that this proposal is still not going to be satisfactory. The main problem is sentences like, I'm talking right now, or I'm saying something to you right now. Those don't clearly seem to be performatives. They seem to be, the way in which they make themselves true is not quite the same way that performatives sort of make themselves true, if you're happy talking that way. So this proposal can't be quite right either. And then the final one was that, was the one that Austin likes the most, which is that an utterance is a performative utterance if the same effect could be achieved with an explicit performative. And basically we saw with that, it's just not really very clear in the first place what we should say an explicit performative is. You might think it's just something, it's just, you, something is an explicit performative if you're saying what you're doing in a certain sense, like saying, I'm stating, I hereby state, or I hereby agree, or I hereby welcome. But when we looked at those cases, we saw it's actually not really clear that those particular cases really were examples of performatives. Now you could say that those are not explicit performatives, they just look like explicit performatives. But then we need to be told what an explicit performative is, because if not, well, then the analysis isn't really very explanatory, and it might in fact be circular. And we should already be worried that it's circular, because it does seem to contain this notion of a performative in the definition, when a performative is, was exactly what we were supposed to be defining in the first place. So those are the proposals we went through. I encourage you to think about more proposals for yourselves. Are there better ways of trying to define what a performative is? Now, I suspect you'll find it pretty difficult, but it's always worth going through the exercise, partly because it will help you get a better grip on what a performative is.